we want to talk about colored models now that we've worked with white models. Um, when we've done white models, we emphasized uh, the overall composition of the design, and that allowed the directors to see without any color as uh, an influence or a distraction to see the model um, in its proportions and its relationship to the action and how things will actually move, doors opening, um, how it meets the blocking needs of the production, basically. When we then turn this into a colored model, here's the colored model for that production, we now have added in uh, color and more details. This model is more useful now for the scene shop. It will help the scenic artists in figuring out how they might paint the walls, where the colors are in the set, and it helps the prop people in understanding how to dress the set. Curtains on the windows, the kind of furniture that we might be using, and even maybe some of the knickknacks and dressings that are on the tables and shelves. So, um, a colored model helps. Obviously, in construction purposes, when we did the white model, we were using brace, basically Bristol board, and um, <clears throat> there was some wood perhaps used in just for support, but this was a quicker model, uh, a way of showing just quick shapes, what things would kind of sort of look like. But it did have, does have all the pencil detail in it as well. This is very lightweight um, and pretty flimsy. When we actually do the colored model, uh, there's a lot more weight to it, a little more time spent in it, and it's a lot more dimensional. So now all the pieces in the white model that were just cut out are now fully dimensional. We have all the railings on all the staircase. We have um, fully functional furniture pieces. We've spent some cleaner time on getting this done, and we've used different material to make that work. A little more substantial, you might say. So let's talk a little bit about um, what we're going to need in the way of materials as we're approaching a colored model. When we're talking about materials for a colored model, one of the first things we're going to start thinking about is the actual board that we're going to use that'll do most of the construction. Whereas we used Bristol board before, we're going to um, use more substantial boards when we're working on a colored model. So the most typical board that I use a lot in my construction is mat board. Mat board is a lot stronger. Uh, I'm not going to have to worry about doing tabs that fold over on the back sides here because this supports itself very well in the, fi in the finished model. I'm going to be cutting this board out. It's going to take a little more work to cut it out, but we'll talk about that here in just a moment. I am going to um, need to cut it a little differently than I cut the other boards that I was talking about, and we'll talk about that also when we get into the construction. And so here's, a, here's some black board that I'm using that um, actually has some pieces already cut out of it. Um, it's a little harder to cut, as I said. This board's kind of nice because you'll notice that in most mat boards, they really are a white board, a hard board, with just a paper covering. The nice thing about the paper covering is I can get it close to the color range I might want for the real set, and therefore that's the less painting I'm going to have to do. I can actually find something kind of close to the color and then do a little bit of detail painting to finish it off. Um, what's nice about this black board, that's a, bl a black pressed board, is that it's solid black. It's black all the way through. So when I cut it, I'm not going to have uh, an edge on one side that's white because of the white board that's, under, that's the main part of the board. I also wanted to kind of show you some other items that I'm going to be using quite a bit. Um, I would even use some of the mat board in constructing some of the furniture pieces. Here's a refrigerator that was used in a production that was completely made out of mat board. So the thickness you can kind of see is built up by different panels of uh, mat board that have been glued together to construct this uh, entire piece. And then it's been painted um, to get the overall effect of a refrigerator, as it were. We're also going to be using um, other materials like wood. Here is uh, mainly basswood wood being used for construction to make a little table of sort. Here is a desk that we'll go through again and show you how some of these are done and how they're constructed. But um, you're going to be using actual wood, basswood, to do some of that work. Um, 
And one thing that's worth talking about is the fact that you can actually, rather than doing all your own construction, you can often buy some things that come pre-made for you. Um, most model train sets come in various scales depending on the train. You have to check your scale, make sure it's accurate to what you want to do. So you might be able to find some things. Uh, these were all made for trains. Uh, they're all in a plastic. And so this, this uh, fence even has a gate detail to it that is kind of nice if that's what you're looking for. Here's another fence piece that's fully dimensional, made for you, ready to go, in a scale, of course. Um, trees. Here's a little wheelbarrow with a working wheel even on it that could be used. Now they might come look, looking a little more plastic and a little fake, but you can spray some paint on those. Make them look a little more realistic if you want to. You can find dollhouse furniture in scales that are equivalent to what you might be working in. Most dollhouses tend to be larger in scale than you might want, but they do have some furniture pieces you can get. Uh, here's a potbelly stove. Again, maybe not in the colors you want, but you can paint them. Um, some of the smaller scale, this is closer to maybe an eighth inch scale if you ever wanted to work on it, um, pieces for railroad or housing detail because people who do miniature houses also use these. Here's a molding that's already created. Here's a post that could be used for a porch railing, holding up the roof there. These are actually made out of lead. Um, so they're actually, because they're lead, they're bendable. They can be used in different shapes. But what's nice about them, it's hard to cut something that's that small. So by making it out of another material like lead, um, it's a little more durable. You can work a little bit better with it. You can even find little tiny people that are created and made to be used in those small scales. And people are kind of important. Here is a half inch figure. Um, it might be in a scale a little bit larger, a little bit smaller than really a true half inch scale, but it probably would work rather well. And you can check that in the shops when you're looking at them. They'll tell you the scale that they're built in. Here's a character that's in quarter scale. Now some of these, this is more of a military type figure, but again, these can all be painted. Uh, you can change them around. You can actually break their arms off and glue them on in a different order if you really want them to. So they look a little bit different. And then here are some figures that are in eighth inch scale. Let me see if I can pop this box open. You have to keep them in a box because they're pretty hard to uh, actually work with because they are so small in an eighth inch scale. And then of course you could actually use these to become dolls to one of the other scales if you wanted to. So people might be something that you might be able to find pre-made for you. But there are lots of different options. Here are some other things that were created in scale. So here we actually have um, a little crate that could be used and a barrel in the same kind of scale. Here's another one that goes with it. So those might be very useful on a quarter inch model. Hope you can see those. They're pretty small. And um, these might be better in probably a half inch, but here's a bag pre-made for you. Um, here's a basket that could be used for a show. Here are some plates made out of wood. Now you might notice that these little pieces almost look like jewelry findings. And in fact, I always have little cases full of jewelry items because um, I go into the costume shop and look at some of the beads and say, you know, those really could be used as a vase. These could be used, um, you know, and maybe put some little miniature flowers in them. Um, buttons can become plates. There's lots of little jewelry findings that could very easily become um, pieces that could be used. Here's another bead that would make a good vase also. You can see that, I hope. Um, lots of little jewelry findings that could be used. In fact, um, you've probably seen little itty bitty tiny beads. I don't know if you can even see that. Those actually on a quarter inch scale glued to a door make really good doorknobs. So you don't have to worry about making all those things. You could find some of those down maybe in the costume shop 
ask if you can borrow a few of their beads. Uh, here's a few that I have that are a little more specialty. I have you have a figure thrown in this one. There he is, tipping his hat at you. Um, some bangles that um, would be used on costumes, but these are maybe really good pieces if I wanted to find mirrors on walls, put frames around those, use those. Um, looks like a lot of the same ones I've already got in the other one. But lots of different beads have different shapes that would work well as vases or knickknacks on shelves uh, rather than trying to reconstruct those yourself. So I, I collect old boxes. These were actually from slides. We don't do slides much anymore, but um, that's what these were for. And this was actually an old film case, right? We The film is still available. It's just harder to find. These make great little cases to collect and put all of your little findings in so they don't get lost. You can just drop in all your pieces and people and say, okay, now they're not going to get all over the floor. Nice to have those. This little set is very interesting. Be really careful with this one. These are actually little teeny tiny miniature hinges that actually work. Open up. If I can actually get a fingernail into that one. So there's an actual little hinge. I hope you can see that. And little teeny tiny nails that you can use to actually attach those to your door frames and um, then you'd have actual little actually they're not really terrible little they're closer to almost a one inch rather than even a half inch scale so they're fairly good size but you can find a lot of those kind of things at uh, craft shops that do doll houses you may not be able to see there's a doorknob that i could use and use on a half inch scale probably for that one but lots of different miniatures these little cactus plants that are in little vases that I could use. Look very plastic and very fake, but again, I pull those apart and paint them and put them back together, I can have some really quick um, pieces. You can even get little tiny glass bottles. Lots of little miniature things meant to be in little captured frames for crafters actually are really good for us. Now, something else you might do when you go into the into the costume shop is you might find fabrics that on a small scale is looks like, like a carpet if it's cut out and added some fringe to the edges of it. I gotta press that a little bit better but that could make a fairly good carpet that's pretty thick in scale. <clears throat> or you might find fabrics that have nice enough weave that if you just pull out some of the threads and get some fringes on one side that those could become nice little carpets also in your models. Um, you might also find some nice um, netting kind of fabrics like this one that's kind of a lino we call a weave that you could then cut and gather and I actually did that and made them into quarter inch scale French doors. So they, I built the French doors using some of the wood that I'll show you later on and then gathered the fabric and put them on there so there's um, a nice set of French doors for a model that I could use. Other fabrics <clears throat> that are really good in the costume shop. There are pellons and fabrics that are often used for interfacing that are somewhat transparent. That could make a good scrim because you can actually see somewhat through that. So if you need to simulate a black scrim on a model, you could use some of that kind of a fabric. And here's a different kind of netting that's a little even more open weave that could also be used for screen on windows or on screen doors. So you might go to the costume shop and you don't have to borrow very much. Those are very small pieces and they would do you quite well in scale. Another uh, means that's really good, another fabric that you could use is called buckram. Buckram is used in making hats, but it's a nice loose weave and that makes nice white scrims. And what I like about it is it's so stiff that I can actually cut it the size of my scrim for a quarter inch model and then press it perfectly flat because it is plastic and it's meant to be shaped so that when you steam it, it gets somewhat soft, somewhat flexible. So I could actually build columns and things out of this and steam them and then they would stay in those shapes. So these could also be a good foundation on which to build other things using some buckram from the costume shop. And then there are specialty papers you can get at craft stores that have different patterns and different weaves kind of looking to them. Um, different kind of textures that could be looked at in miniature. You can say that might look like barn wood. Could look like um, really nice scaled textured 
some sort of texture. And then you've got reflective pieces here. This is actually just a paper that could make a good mirror for a little miniature uh, model as well. <clears throat> now, we get into crafting. When you start crafting your own pieces, we already talked about these little furniture pieces that are made out of wood. These are all made out of basswood. I'm going to leave them here because we'll come back and refer to them. And this one was made out of mat board, as we talked before. Um, so here are some pieces. Here's a little table that was made um, out of a flat piece of basswood here. Basswood build up around the side to get the under turnings. And then I actually built the legs and turned them myself. We're going to actually show you how to do that. So I used dowel and actually turned these legs myself. So we can build those. Um, here was a little flat piece of built-in um, cupboard that needed to be used in the bedroom and that's all made out of basswood as well. Here is a tree that I made and it's actually made out of Boning made from mat board cut out the way that a pectal book might show you how to build a, a real tree in boning it all out there. And then it's all covered with um, paper towels from the men's bathroom. You know, that nice brown paper towel that seems so scratchy and itchy and we just we don't like them very much, but we use them and throw them in the garbage can. If you actually mix those with a uh, a cut glue, which is 50% water and 50% glue, and then dip things in it and shape it. It's very malleable while it's wet, right? But when it dries, a nice hard surface that paints very well. Here are some other little miniature pieces. Here's a door that was made for a show. The back of it is matte board, and, in f and the front of it is actually cut out of a piece of basswood, and we cut out the molding that's on the inside part of the um, door and then it was all painted and shellacked. Here's an actual molding. It's been pulled off and so it's kind of ugly. Often what I do is when a show's over I'll vandalize the model and use the pieces for something else later on. So this is actually made from two or three different pieces of basswood and then cut to get the molding piece out of it and assembled. And that's actually how you do it in a lot of buildings. You use different kinds of cuts of wood and assemble them to make a crown molding, as that one is. Um, you can also buy that, of course, and have it done. You can actually um, photocopy little teeny tiny newspapers on paper and then fold them up. So that's actually made on um, just um, newsprint. So it's got kind of the color of a newspaper because they make newsprint into newspapers and then folded to make in little newspapers. And I needed that for, um, this is just the top of a cabinet that I had for a show. This was the push button for a backstage. Here's the script that was actually made from folding paper, a little tiny pencil made out of wood and some folded up papers there. So all those were combined to make a little grouping for one part of it. And uh, another thing that you can do is there are lots of different kinds of sculpting clay. This is called ProSculpt. Actually, comes in flesh tone, so you can make um, you can make your own people out of this if you really wanted to. But you can also find um, um, Fimo or Sculpey or any of the other ones that you simply make into objects like this one. I needed a fire extinguisher in a half inch scale, so I created all this out of Fimo, and then you bake them in an oven. So they become hard, and then I painted them. So there's a fire extinguisher that I made. I also used that same technique and built kind of just a box and put a little rivet on the back of it and then put a little screen on the front made out of Fimo and two little beads and made myself a little miniature television for a quarter-inch scale. Here are plastic animals that I also collect. Yeah, so I can entertain my children and my grandchildren. Makes it lots of fun. But what I actually do is a lot of them have lost their heads because I will cut their heads off and mount them on a plaque to hang on the wall so that in you know in a, uh, a set there I wanted an animal head mounted. There I go. I got those from my nice little plastic animals that I also keep in my kit. I mentioned basswood. It's time to talk about basswood and all of its different options. You can get basswood in major wide cuts. So here's a nice piece of basswood, and it's a fairly substantial. It's not anything like 
um, balsa wood, which is a lot weaker and breaks a lot easier. So you can see that I've had a lot of different cuts out of this. You need to watch the grain and know which way you want to lay the wood to make that work. Your answer is usually in looking at the realized object and watch the way grain runs in a chair or in a door or anything you're making out of wood and then you'll you'll do pretty well if you always stay with the grain and work with it. Diagonal cuts are some of the hardest because wood will start to splinter as you cut it diagonally. Um, if you cut with the grain you're always going to have the easiest cut doing that and then cutting across the grain usually takes a few more pulls to get it exactly right. Sometimes you can buy basswood that comes pre-cut for you. This one's already been cut so it looks like a lath board for the side of a house. That's nice to have that already pre-cut for you. You can find moldings that are already pre-cut. Now I hope you'll be able to see some of these. So these are some wall moldings. This has got the indent, dimpled wood cut, already pre-cut for me. This one's um, the outside curve, so it's a quarter round that can be used in combination with this one to create some sort of a crown molding around my set if I wanted to do that. Um, to complete that I might just take a small piece like this and cut pieces in it and then I'd get that that um, staggered texture that they often have in a crown molding as well. Those work out fairly well. But you'll notice that this wood comes in various kind of cuts. Here are all square cuts but look at the different sizes they are. So I can make beams I can make huge pieces, a larger beam and a larger scale, or so here's maybe an eighth inch and a quarter inch and a half inch, all different kind of sizes that I could do. When I go to the um, store, the craft store, to get my basswood, I'm smart to take a scale ruler along with me so I can measure things to see that they fit within the world that I want to do. Here's some nice flat cut pieces. So um, it's some of this kind of wood that are come in a bigger scale, but they've already cut it down into uh, planks of some sort that are already in the scale that I might need them. And you can see basswood can come in very wide scales. There's a very nice piece that comes in a very nice big piece size that I could really cut something larger out of if I needed to. And then of course the thing that you can get the most um, out of basswood is what most of you identify with and that is, grab the wrong one there, sorry, and that's doweling. You can get dowels in lots of different sizes, lots of different roundness, and these are particularly good for doing some of your um, turnings, like those legs on this table that I told you about. That was actually created using this dowel right here to make each of those turnings. So we're going to talk now a little bit about construction. Oh, one more thing. As I'm working and cutting my wood, I keep a box by and so all my scrap wood is all in here so that when I need just a small piece of, of lumber, I've got bass and some balsa in here. This is the, this is the uh, balsa wood. It's got a heavier grain, but it's also a lot more fragile. Breaks very quickly, very easily. You have to be very careful when you're working with balsa wood. Oh, one last piece I was going to show you here, which is really nice. Hope you can see that. Maybe you'll be able to see it at a cut edge, but I'll turn it a few times. It's actually a hand railing. It's pre-carved for me, so it's got the nice rounded top here and then the molding on both sides like a nice hand railing for probably a half inch or larger model. Lots of fun things you can capture. You learn when you're in scenic design to hit craft shops frequently, um, especially when you're in a strange town and you finally have a craft shop shop, you go down and look and see what they might have there that you can't get anywhere else. But today, with the internet, you should be able to get almost anything online.